Testing, testing. 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 Testing, testing. I'm so grateful God gives us the privilege of imagination. But you know, we have more than just simply the imagination that God creates in our personal minds. We also have a vivid description of what is awaiting those of us who have planned and prepared for what the Lord has prepared for us. So today, as we uh, reflect on the life of our dear brother, Thomas Earl Tom Humphreys, if we'd have called him by name, most of us wouldn't have made it today, would we? We'd have been looking for Thomas, but we find Tom, okay? And most likely, that's how most all of you knew him. 
So let's pray together as we start, okay? Father, thank you for being the ever-present help that we need today. Thank you for this family. Lord, you care for them. Lord, uh, you never leave us or forsake us. So today, Lord, we know that uh, the suffering that Brother Tom has had over the last few years, we know that, Lord, you have been there with him every step of the way. And Lord, even the other evening, Lord, you led him on that last step of the journey from this life to the life everlasting. Lord, bless the family, give them strength, give them wisdom and grace. And Lord, uh, ever keep them, I pray, with the memories that are, are well, uh, that of uh, Brother Tom. We love you, we thank you for the privilege today to just uh, talk somewhat about him a little bit, but also to talk about Jesus in whose name I pray, amen. If you had the privilege to read the obituary, you know that Brother Tom had a lengthy list of family uh, survived by Miss Martha. I will not call everyone else by name, but there are four children, 15 grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, and I might have jumped over something there, but three brothers, a sister, and the last sentence there covers most of it, numerous nieces and nephews, and might I add, a lot of friends, okay? Some of you were work friends, maybe from CSX. Others of you uh, might have known Tom as y'all were growing up together, like one gentleman I was talking to earlier. And uh, we're grateful that God brings us in our life into relationships and that's how I knew Brother Tom. I have not been privileged to know him, but about four months. But Brother Tom is one of those fellows that it didn't take you four years to get to know him. You could learn of him pretty quickly, okay? And uh, I learned uh, to love him, Debbie and I did, very, very quickly. So as we honor his life today and honor our Lord, I pray that you'd just be open-minded and likewise, maybe the Lord will speak to you as uh, we come today for this celebration. times I've questioned certain circumstances things I could not understand many times in trials weakness blurred my vision my frustration gets so out of hand oh but it's then I remind Never had to stand the test alone. As I look at all the victories, the spirit rises up in me. For it's through the fire my weakness is made strong. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not. Never 
promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be far to climb. He never offered a victory without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of Thank you. Thank you, brother. Just hold on. You know, let me remind you while you're holding on, the scripture says also that he is holding on to us. We may have a tendency to slip with our hand, but he never, never, ever lets us go. Aren't we glad that we serve a God who is bigger than anyone or anything in this world? Thank you so much for reminding us of that beauty today. Thinking about our dear brother Tom, I sort of just keep my ears open a lot. Uh, you notice they're a little bigger than normal, so I try to listen a little bit more than I talk. However, if I don't have pencil and paper, I, write, I don't write, always write it down. And I've also came to the age when I write it down, I forget where I wrote it. So if you ever see some of my notes around the church or somewhere, just pick them up, bring them back to me and I'll use them somewhere, okay? The psalmist said in chapter 122, verses 1 through 9, it's a psalm of David. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Yes, when I thought of Brother Tom over my months of being able to shepherd them a little bit at Kettle Creek, my first thought of him was that first uh, sentence or first verse. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, Brother Tom probably didn't always feel like going to the house of the Lord because he naturally had been suffering for some time. But yet and still, he always made it away, and when he came, he was able uh, to stir around, I call it, okay, and hug some necks and shake some hands. Why? Because I believe he recognized that when you go to the house of the Lord, it is not a boring time, but it is a blessing time. And as a result of that, I believe he drew strength from that uh, group of people that he was able to be ministered to by, and little did he know how well he was ministering to us in his presence. The psalmist also said in chapter 84, verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, see law. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. 
I love the Psalms. Why? Because even though many of them were written by David, even though David was the king of Israel, we learn likewise that David was a man who spent a lot of time alone. And when I say that time alone, I'm reflecting on the fact that he was a shepherd earlier in his life. And while shepherding, he would spend those sleepless nights, those starry nights, I call it, and he would be alone outside on the hillside or in a valley somewhere while tending the sheep, and he and God would do business. Oh, I think uh, as I reflect on that, it would be well. It would be well for me to do more business with God, like I'm referring to David. Why? Because it's not what we are always publicly, but what we are privately. It's more important who we are than what we say. It is more important even whose we are than who we are. Oh, aren't we glad, David, the shepherd, the one who would lead and the one who likewise was able to be led early in his life. The wise man said in Proverbs 22 and 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. I reflect on that first phrase, a good name. I was thinking today and this morning as I really was sitting at my desk for a while, and I was thinking about in my ministry how many Brother Toms I've known. Common name, is it not? I've ministered to some great men, and they were named Tom or Thomas. Some of those have left such lasting uh, impressions on my mind uh, and that of my family that we or I think of them quite often. Brother Tom now is on that list, okay? Why? Because although he might have been a short man when it comes to stature, he was a large man in my eyes when it came to relationship, and that is relationship with the Lord as well as relationship with myself. It was very early on that uh, Brother Tom called me pastor. I, I really am by calling, but I went uh, to Kettle Creek as interim pastor, but Brother Tom began to call me pastor maybe from the first day. And uh, I always take note of that. And you say, why do you take note of that? It's because that's what God called me to be. God didn't call me to be a preacher, although I have that chore and responsibility. But Brother Tom was one of those sheep that recognized the pastor, and I'm just talking about that in a leadership position. I could say lots about him. His brothers have told me lots of things about him over the last couple of weeks. I didn't have time to go back and ask him about a lot of things about his brothers, so <laughs> I believe he probably could have told me a few things. None of it is bad, seriously. They had such a relationship. My first meeting of his brothers was in the, was in the uh, emergency room one afternoon. I had got a call that he was there, so I, I started my endeavor to try to find him. I found him uh, there, and uh, they were waiting on a couple of brothers that day, and I happened to go out the door, and I looked down the hall. I said, there's them two you waiting on. I'd never met them in my life. But someone said out in the hallway a while ago, I believe it was, they could, they could stand for triplets. I don't know about that, but thank you, brothers. There's nothing like the camaraderie of family. If you have one, cherish it. If you don't, be a family to somebody else. Spread that great love. I'd ask the family if they had anything special they'd like me to say. And uh, I got this email last night or this text message, and uh, I was asked if I could incorporate this, and I said, you better believe I will. First of all, it was a verse. The verse is in Matthew 25, 21. The King James says, his Lord saith unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou in the joy of thy Lord. The version in which it was sent to me, I know not. I think it might have been even the 
modern white cross version, which is better than the King James. It says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Friend, if you would examine that word come, you would discover that it has lasting effects. Jesus would say that many times. I'm reminded of Matthew 11 when he would say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. The end of that text or that message last night was this. A little about Brother Tom from his daughter's view. He was an amazing man. His love for his kids never faltered. No matter day or night, he was always there. And we will forever be grateful to have been blessed by such an amazing father. Thank you so much for that. I, it blessed my soul last night when I read it. And I actually, I, actually te- I actually emailed that text to myself where I wouldn't forget it this morning. Yes, I'm at the age of some of you. Someone told me the other day at the hospice house, I think it was his good friend told me, that he had asked Brother Tom, if he could do it all over again, what would he do? I think I'm giving a quote here. It's very close, if not. He said, I'd be a better Christian. Well, let that settle this evening. Resonate on that a while. Because Brother Tom, to me, when he gave his friend that explanation, was saying, everything I would do, I've accomplished. All I would do is do it better. Friend, do you know what we do in life deserves our very, very best? And sometimes we beat ourselves up because when we do something, we never feel like we've done our best. Don't let the devil rob you. Give it your best every time. And when he comes to you and says, hey, you should have done it harder or done it another way, just tell him, Satan, it wasn't your job to do, and you will not get the glory. I thought of Brother Tom, just a few words here, his suffering. I didn't know him through his suffering only the last four months. But yes, He suffered. He suffered greatly, I'm sure, greater than any of us would know. His family would know a little bit more than me for sure, but when we stop to think about that, suffering is a, it's common in life, isn't it? Right by the hospice house, I was out there each day he was there, and one day there was one person, next day there were five. Go in the next morning, there was one, next afternoon there's three. You say, what were they all doing? I don't have to tell you, they were dying. Think about it. Suffering. All suffering does not end in death. But death will come upon all if the Lord tarries. I like this verse in Romans 8. It's not necessarily my favorite, but it's one of them. He said, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Brother Tom had got his way. Notice I I messed up the if. If Brother Tom had his way, he would still be with us. I say that unapologetically. Why? Because he loved life. He, He wasn't voting for an early death or departure. But his suffering, he was faithful through it. Also, I thought about his surrender. Job said in chapter 1, verse 20, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. 
great, great man of God Job was. But yet and still, we find comparable men and women in our lives who likewise has faced hardship, suffering. They faced it with surrender. Third thing I thought about was his satisfaction. He seemed to have joy. He didn't always have happiness. Neither do you. But friend, let me tell you something. Suffering can't rob you of joy. Suffering can rob us of happiness. It can make our face look sour. But joy, the joy of the Lord, can always be present. Who was it said the joy of the Lord is our strength? That's why when we're weak, we can be strong in the Lord. Why? Because the Lord gives us His strength at our account. His suffering, His surrender, His satisfaction. You say satisfaction. Yes, we all find satisfaction in a lot of different places. But I think in a way, Brother Tom found his in in his worship. Thought of an old song. I'll immediately not sing it, first of all. Secondly, I'll share a few of the words, the stanzas. B.B. McKinney wrote this song. I forget what year, but it says this. I am satisfied with Jesus. He has done so much for me. He has suffered to redeem me. He has died to set me free. He is with me in my trials. Best of friends of all is he. I can always count on Jesus. Can he always count on me? I can hear the voice of Jesus calling out pleadingly. Go and win the lost and straying. Is he satisfied with me? When my work on earth is ended and across the mystic sea, oh, that I could hear him saying, I am satisfied with thee. The chorus says, I am satisfied, I am satisfied, I am satisfied with Jesus. But the question comes to me as I think of Calvary, is my master satisfied with me? The thought for that, was the premise of the promise that we will all stand before Jesus sometime. You say, what about those of us who do not take time for him or commit ourselves to him? You will too. But today, every knee and every tongue could confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Matter of fact, he said it all, all will do that one day. But you'll do it in time or at the beginning of eternity. Everyone will live for an eternity. It's just a matter of where will you live. I read a text. I don't know that I've ever read at a funeral. It's out of Proverbs 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them on the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Many of us know a portion of that passage probably in our memory bank for years. However, all 12 of those verses 
still speak to the same subject matter, and that is uh, don't forget the law. Keep the commandments. Why? We all vote for length of days and long life and peace will be added unto thee. You know what life is? Life that the Lord explains to us here is a life of peace. Is it always easy? No. Is there sometimes some bumps in the road? Absolutely. But my friend, let me tell you, if there is peace in this life, it's because it came from Jesus. My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, saith the Lord. Yes, this passage tells us there is a life of peace. It tells me also that there is a life of popularity. He said, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them on thy neck. Write them on the table of thine heart. And you'll find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Some people tell you that you cannot be in favor with God and man. This tells us different. Matter of fact, I believe it's in Luke chapter 2, verse 42, said Jesus grew in favor with God and man. Many are wasting their precious time trying to find favor with man, neglecting that the favor begins with God. I think, Brother Tom, in the latter parts of what I knew him, he knew what it was like to be right with God but also to be right with man. A life of peace and a life of popularity, but also a life of priority. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and don't lean totally on your own understanding. I inserted the word totally. Why? Because he said, lean not unto thine own understanding. Oh, I can let my conscience lead me. Please let me get out of the way before you live like that. Because the scripture tells us that our conscience is not always our best guide. The scripture talks about a weak conscience. It talks about a seared conscience. But he said, trust the Lord with your heart. And don't lean on your own understanding. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. There's a year of sermons in that sentence. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It'll be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. I believe it to be true. Everyone who has been born has a navel. The lifeline. Friend, let me just remind you about that. The Lord is talking about a life of purity. It'll be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. But he closed it by saying there's a life of plenty. You know, many people vote for that. Honor the Lord with your substance. And with the first fruits of thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Ah, oh, the Lord isn't concerned about us. We don't have anything. The Lord is concerned about them more than us because they have all they could want. Friend, let me tell you something about that. The Lord gives us what we need. My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Brother Tom I close with these thoughts. He was a worker. Little did I know until the last month or so that he mowed lawns, picked up limbs. No, tell him what else he did. Thankfully, he got out of the hurricane mess up. Didn't have to clean up that. But he was a worker. It's debatable. Some would say CSX don't go along with working. Those two words don't go in the same sentence. Brother Tom was a worker. Amen. Most of you know he was a worshiper. I know he was. 
He was a waiter, not at one of the local restaurants. But he believed, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Brother Tom, so far, has went the way of all men other than two others in the Scripture. Genesis 5, always give us a little sentence, and it says this, And he died, and he died. Read it if you don't believe me. Friend, let me just say this in closing. Yes, Brother Tom passed, but it doesn't make God unfaithful. It doesn't make your prayers have been in vain. God is God. And he loved Brother Tom. Why? Because he knew that his only son, Jesus, gave his life for him, shed his blood for him. And Brother Tom's just like the rest of us. We can know he's in heaven today, not because of what Tom did, but because of what Jesus did. And he would tell you today, trust Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we're going to have another song but I just want to ask you to bless the word. Lord, not my lips that uttered it. They're just human. They're frail. But Lord, bless the word. And Lord, I, I pray that your word will find lodgment in a heart, if not many. And not just time will show the change, but eternity will as well. In Jesus' name, amen. When Brother Tom got sick, they told him he had the mess. He came to me and my wife, and he said, well, y'all, I want y'all to sing at my funeral. And there's no greater honor than to sing at the funeral of a friend. The next song is, is Amazing Grace. And I doubt there's anybody in here that don't know Amazing grace. I'm going to lead it, but if you would, sing with me. We're going to sing the first three verses, and then we're going to praise God one time. Okay? <clears throat> Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and face my fear.
tis grace hath brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home now the best part praise god 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 praise god